Well, we're moving out of this horrible year and into 2021, and I see that you've made a list of things that could be done in 2021 to make professional wrestling fun again, of all things. Well, th this started um, talking to Jim Valley. Um, he, you know, he had tweeted his comments about, you know, the AW show and how great it was and just how much he'd like a more positive vibe from wrestling. And we DM'd a little bit and, you know, what I had mentioned that, you know, I, I think it would be nice to see, you know, more babyface wins. And he's like, even more than that, he's like, just the, the positive tone of a show. And, and it really struck me, and I, I've thought about it before, but I always thought of it more about, you know, it'd be nice to have more happy endings with babyface victories and so forth. But I think there is something to the the concept of, you know, heat drawing the money, which I think is a misnomer to a certain extent, but I think also, too, it's it's too high of a price has been put on it or too high of a value has been put on it that with especially with the year 2020 being, you know, everything that you see, experience and do in your life, seemingly, you know, the people out of work, the people getting sick, the people losing their jobs, all the horrible things, you turn to TV as an escape and maybe having a more positive vibed show with happier results might not be a refreshing thing. And, you know, I thought about a lot of things. And obviously, you know, baby faces winning and happy outcomes, you know, because again, look how excited everyone was when Big E won the IC title on SmackDown. It was just everyone seemed to universally like the show better. And, you know, there's the old school mentality. It's like, oh, you know, you can't just have baby faces winning all the time. You need that heat. And it's like, do we? You know, and, and I, I started thinking, like, again, just, and again, this is not a brand-specific, company-specific thing, but, you know, Raw this past week, you know, the, the opener was a babyface, babyface match, for the most part, but, you know, I think Sheamus is the, the, the person that had the most interest in winning, and there's more story behind it than with Keith, and Keith won, and it's like, okay, he's a babyface, but... Both were, so that's a wash. But then you had, you know, the disappointing DQ in the Charlotte match. You had Shayna go over as a heel. You had Retribution go over as a heel. That eight-man tag, Bobby Lashley went over as a heel. The main event, we teased setting a little woman on fire. And, and it, this, by the way, followed a show where there was every single win in the first two and a half hours was a heel win. That was the week prior. Yeah, and it was it was... Striking because when the eight man was was going on, it's like it was really great. And I've said this millions of times, and it used to be back when when Jeff Hardy was super hot before he left the first time, whatever year that was, you know the you know two thousand five six somewhere in there. SmackDown would always have these six man matches, and it's like they were always exciting, they were always great, and Jeff Hardy would always win with a, a swanton, and it's like. Everybody always loved the shows and left happy. And it's like, it's always been a, a strong belief of mine that it's like the six man tag is like the easiest match to have a great match with. And when you've got six mans, or in this case, an eight man, it's like, I find it impossible to believe that you can't beat one of those three or four heels and not do any damage. And give us a happy ending. And I was watching this eight man going, man, this is awesome. I was loving it. It was great. And I'm a big fan of the Hurt Business. But again, I, I think heels can survive losses way easier than baby faces can. And I'm speaking from experience. I was a heel. And I'm just like, this is so great. And it's exciting. And they're going into the finish. And Jeff Hardy hits the swan time. And it's like, I was just about to tweet out the, this is always the easiest, greatest thing you can have. It's so simple. And then... It's like they kicked out and then Bobby won with, you know, the, the hurt lock again. And I just can't help but think that it wouldn't have hurt Bobby, especially because he's been protected so strong, to be on the losing side but have nothing to do with the finish. And I think, too, with, you know, if Jeff or Matt Riddle had beat either um, uh, Cedric or Shelton, it's like, well, there's the the hardy bros 
you know, picking up a win over one of the tag champs, it's like, A, it would be a happy ending. B, it would set up a desirable match. And it's, uh, I just, I think it would be refreshing. And I would like that if at every opportunity, not necessarily every case, but unless there's a strong case of why we're doing a heat ending or a heat segment, it's like, do we need to do it? And, and again, I, yeah. Ch chime in if you want. If not, I'm going to keep going. I'm I'll chime in here. Okay. Save I can me think Mike back to the to the uh, two hottest periods in the history of WWE. It was the 80s, and it was the late 90s. And in both of those periods, the shows always ended with a happy ending every single time. Hulk Hogan got his hand oh. raised at and the end of every down. show in the 80s. Those 90s Raw shows that I watched, like the beginning of the show. Mr. McMahon would hatch a diabolical plan. They'd get some sort of heat, and he would get a stunner at the end of the show. And I'm not exaggerating. It happened all the time. Over at least, and at least over. nine out of ten times. And you know what's funny? It never got old. It's not like, oh, people liked it for a couple of months, and then they got sick of it, and everything started to fall. No, it kept going up. And now, I mean, I've, I'm not going to talk for more than like 30 seconds, but I'm sick of heat. I'm so sick of heat. I'm sick of just heel win, heel win. The heel beatdown that goes like 10 minutes. So you're be like, they want you to beg for the babyface to come out. But like, they go so long that I'm just done with it. And by the time the babyface comes out, I'm over it. They like overshot their target. Just give me some happy endings. Give me some babyface wins. Give me some buddies. Give me some people working together. Give me some heels vanquished. Just give me some happiness on these shows for crying out loud. And I, I think that was, you know, part of Jim's point that the just the vibe and feel. It's like have some baby faces that have some loyal friends. Have some baby faces. Because even, you know, the you know, the Keith Lee, Seamus, Drew McIntyre, three baby faces have all been interacting over the last few weeks, and it's like they're constantly bickering and fighting. And it reminds me again of, you know, one of the hottest acts over the last, you know, I don't know whether it's been five years or 10 years now, but it's like New Day have been a huge bright spot from the fan perspective. The fans love them. And it's like, what are they? There are three guys that are legitimately really good friends that have each other's back, that never argue, never bicker, and they just go out there and have fun. And it's like it got over really big. And, you know, Becky Lynch is, I think, again, you know, one of the biggest stars they've created in a long time. And she's the only, again, she may not be the only, but certainly one of the only people that I don't believe has ever turned NXT or WWE. She has always been babyface Becky Lynch. And when they tried to turn her heel, the crowd balked at it and made her a bigger babyface. And I think there's something to friends, loyalty, doing the right thing, having people that don't bicker and squabble and fight. And then you hit a good point, and it was something I was going to bring up, but it's like, you know, pick a show, uh, you're a bad example, but, you know, pick a show that people watch, you know, if you're going to watch, you know, if you watch Hawaii Five-0, if you watch NCIS, it's like, there's heat in the middle of every show, but the end of every show, the babyface wins and you leave happy and they wrap up the heat. Dude, every show, every movie, every possible form of entertainment. And I know that when I read commentary on this show here, someone's going to say, oh, well, this one, the heels won in the end. Yeah, one out of a thousand movies, the heels win in the end. And then there's another 999 movies where the babyfaces win. Then you get that one movie where the heel wins. But like, that's... It rarely happens. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.